Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start Tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com and I'm here to show newbies how to get the most out of free GNU Cash accounting software for their small business bookkeeping needs. Join me on YouTube as I break down GNU Cash so that even a baby will be able to master it quickly and easily. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and it encourages me to keep producing videos if I know they're helping. A thumbs up is icing on the cake. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. In today's tutorial, the importance of the accounting period preferences, I will go into detail on how the GNU Cash accounting period preferences functions and the role the different settings play in generating the financial calculations you need when you need them. Let's begin. By setting up your accounting period preferences in GNU Cash, you are telling the system this is the starting date and ending date I want to use to keep track of my business accounting profit, loss calculations, and net assets calculations. For most small businesses, their accounting period will be based on a standard calendar year accounting period, 12 consecutive months beginning January 1 and ending on December 31st. Then there are other businesses and organizations that use a fiscal year accounting period. We will begin this tutorial with setting up a standard calendar year accounting period consisting of 12 consecutive months beginning January 1 and ending on December 31st. To begin, select Edit from the menu bar and when the menu opens, click on Preferences. By default, the accounting period is the first option. You have two options here, relative and absolute. Both relative and absolute controls the profit loss calculations and net assets calculations as displayed on the status bar and in the financial reports the system generates. The relative settings are programmed to work with the list of options on the right hand side. If you click on the drop down arrow, you can see the preset date range options you have to work with. The first few options are preset date range options based on a standard calendar year accounting period covering January 1 to December 31st of the current year. Only the last option is based on the previous year. The relative start of this year and end of this year options are generally selected by default in GNU Cash. If not, select relative and then click on the drop down arrow and select start of this year option. Next, scroll down to the end date and select relative again and click on the drop down arrow and select the end of this year option. As you may have noticed, I skipped over the date field text boxes. You don't have to change the default date entered in the text box and that's because the relative settings do not acknowledge the date field. It only acknowledges the selected options. The present settings will display a standard calendar year accounting period starting on January 1 and ending on December 31st of the current year. For example, when I select reports, income and expense, then profit and loss, here is a preview of what the financial calculations based on the present accounting period settings would look like. As you can see, the relative settings disregarded the 1999 date entered in the text box and generated a profit and loss report for a standard year accounting period covering January 1 to December 31st of the current year 2023. But there's just one problem with the selected settings. Once the new year starts, you will find that the selected options relative start of this year and end of this year settings will not generate the previous year's financial reports. It's not a major problem, it's just that you need to be aware of it so that you won't panic when it's time to generate your end of year reports for tax time and you can't find them. For example, Right now we're in the year 2023 and say you use the relative start and end of year options or you never change the default settings and now you want to generate your reports 
for the previous year 2022. It's not going to happen until you select relatives previous year option for start and end dates. Here I have an example of a report generated in 2023 for 2022 using relatives previous year option. Keep in mind the previous year option only defaults to the year before the current year. Next we have the absolute accounting period preferences. My favorite for when you need complete control over your start and end dates, profit and loss calculations, and or net assets calculations based on the date range accounting period of your choice. The absolute preferences is ideal for setting up start and end of year dates based on your needs. Businesses that use a fiscal year accounting period as opposed to the standard year accounting period will find this setting especially useful because the absolute settings overrides the limitations of the relative settings and works directly with the date range you specify for displaying the profit and loss calculations in the status bar and in the reports the system generates. For example, say your business uses a fiscal year accounting period which starts on April 1 of 2023 and ends on March 31st of 2024. To set up a fiscal year accounting period, select absolute for start date and scroll over to the right hand side and click on the drop down arrow next to the date text box to bring up the calendar you can use to select your starting date. By clicking on the arrows on the calendar to scroll through and select your month, year, and day. Or you can simply type the date into the date text field text box, but it will only work as long as you enter the date in the same format as shown. Here I entered the start date as of April 1, 2023 and included my forward slashes and I entered the accounting period's end of year date as March 31st, 2024. Here is a preview of the profit and loss report I generated with the selected settings. As you can see, the absolute accounting period settings can work with any combination of start and ending dates you specify in a date field. Now to finish up, you simply scroll down to the bottom of the window and click on the close tab to close out or you can use the X at the top of the window to close out.